Hello everybody, my name is Jacob Wolf. I'm Christopher Hoisington and we're here with Christopher Knox. This is the Art Life Video Blog. Please subscribe to us, like us, love us, find us. Uh, this is day 38 and uh, yeah, we're pretty excited about it. It's been going real well. It's been going really well. We've been talking with uh, Christopher Knox. Uh, we met him, I met him over at Pinky's Pizzeria and uh, he gave me a ride home so we could actually do the interview with Christopher. Uh, was, which was very nice of you. Hey, so you know, thank you. I'm a uh, I'm a philanthropist. What can I say? So what kind of an artist do you call yourself? Uh, well, right now I call myself a comic book artist. Really? But I don't. I have one comic book produced, uh, and that's kind of where my work is going right now. Uh, the past six months I've been writing scripts. Uh, that will be turned into comics. Yeah, uh, I call it the Thirteen Project. It's a lot like uh, it's a lot like screenwriting, I would imagine. Uh, is it formulaic? Like you got the plot point number one, and then you go to another plot point, and, you, and then you have the, your conclusion. Yeah, in the beginning, uh, I I always kind of start with an outline first. Uh -huh. uh, you know, just to you know. It, Usually we'll start with something that I saw or something that I think is particularly interesting. Uh, I have one story about a guy that's haunted by a character from a movie. Uh, so I just come up with like that one idea, uh, formulate that into plot points, you know, just like, well, then this will happen, then this will happen. Right. And then I sit down and the script just looks, it's really simple. I mean, you just, you envision what each panel will look like. Right. You just describe what that panel looks like and then uh, then I go to storyboard and then finish product so when did you when did you start getting an interest in comic books uh, well I wouldn't consider myself a comic book fan like I don't collect superheroes right uh, superhero comics the comics that I'm interested in are usually like independent, mm -hmm. biographical, something that stands out or twists the medium in a way that I've never seen before. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is kind of, not to say that I go after things that are, you know, that nobody's ever heard of, but the things that usually are, go outside of the norm usually end up becoming popular because I wish, they do such I, a good I job. wish I could remember I'm thinking of a I used to go to the the uh, I used to like to read comic type material before I went to sleep a few years ago when oh, I was yeah. living with my mother I used to I used to read like a half an hour and I used to get these comics from the they, they were like uh, graphic novels more than just comics right like a completed story it's a completed a story yeah. and but they were they were very unique. They were sometimes they were Batman and Spider Man, but a lot of times they were like somebody's maybe an autobiographical thing that they did that they created yeah. this and they did the drawings and they did the writings and they did it all, you know, and they yeah. created the whole book and it was their thing. It had nothing to do with that's the what I, heroes. That's what I'm interested in. Uh, a lot of the kind of the the factory norm the practice is you have a writer and you have an artist. Yes. And then, you know, if you have a, a big budget or you have a lot of connections, then, then you'll have an inker. Right. You know, so you have all these people coming to make one thing. And they, you'll have people doing the lettering. Even. Yeah, and the lettering. Yeah. A lot of the lettering is done on computers now. Right. But the stuff that I'm drawn to is usually the stuff that you're talking about. Works that are completely done by by one person that have a specific story to tell. Do you do you uh, know the names of any off the top of your head? Um, People I'm, that you emulate. Well, I don't think that. I mean, I, what artists would say that their style is similar? I don't know if I could say that I have a similar style or like I, that I emulate anybody. Right. Um, I'm a huge fan of Chester Brown. Who did um, uh, paying for it? It's a biographical comic about paying for uh, sex, which is um, it's amazing. It's an amazing comic, right? And um, 
There's a couple other guys that I usually would be able to rattle off. Yeah, my head no, we right pin now. we pin you down. <laughs> but I mean, I love the I love the fact that you have a hard time identifying. You know, you know, because I I I. I've done the same thing in my kind of my career is is I'll do something like especially the things Charles that I, Burns. Charles there Burns. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Charles Burns. Okay. And he did what? What was uh, the name of the comic? Black Hole. He did. I was first. I first was introduced with, to Charles Burns through. Uh, a show on MTV in the late 90s called Liquid Television. I yes, yes, I it. remember that. So, uh, Dog Boy was a show on that where everybody had plastic hair, uh -huh. and that was from Skin Deep, which was the, one of his first comics. Okay. Um, and uh, that that whole show was really inspiring. I would say. Out of that show, more than more than Charles Burns, because it took me a long time to really discover. I didn't even know who Charles Burns was at the time. Yeah. Uh, one of. I guess we should go back to your original question: was why, why I chose comics. Yes. When I was in art school, I had this. I was really into movie making. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was, you know, I went to PNCA. I think my first year at PNCA was in 2010. Okay. 2011. And before that, I had gone to school in Portland, Maine. Uh, and my first year was 99. So between 99 and 2010, okay. there was this huge jump in, in what you could get out of, the, out of the tech cage at a, any given art school. There was a huge jump in technology. Right. Huge And what, jump. You, what you needed to make a movie in 99, yeah. which is what I was interested in, and what you needed to make a movie in 2010 exactly was incredible well i mean as an example the reason that we're able to do this interview the way that we're doing it example. and 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 Absolutely. every day iPhone is because six. shit i mean it's got the sound it's got the video it's fucking amazing yes thank you apple we love you so anyway <laughs> so so anyway I, I made some movies and then I left PNCA and had the same amount of money or the yeah. same amount of finances as I did when I started, and, more and, did, debt. And, and didn't have any of the technology to make to make these movies. Right. But I love I love telling stories, so and I love to draw. So comics just seemed like a, a natural progression to that. It was more important. The medium doesn't really matter to me. It's the story that matters. Right. So the story that matters. And because drawing was has always been a strong skill of mine, you know, ever since I was a kid, it, it just made sense to, to pursue comics. Well, the thing so about, that's what I've been doing. Yeah, since the thing about PC. comics is it, it's it's equal. I mean, the story is. I think the story is always paramount to having a reader go from the beginning to the end, or even in a movie, it's the story that takes. A viewer from the beginning to the right. end, right? So you have to have a solid story, but the artwork also. In well, I mean, it. movies, like Calvin comics. And Hobbes, if you think about the artwork in Calvin and Hobbes, I mean, he had all this, you know, sort of philosophical shit that he put in there, but they're riding this sled down a, down a slope, and it makes yeah. it interesting, and the and it's. Yeah. It's fun, and the characters are, you know, they portray a certain amount of emotional energy. Let's see your artwork. Are you uh, a quick sketch for, the, uh, for the, the final product, or is it, like, really detailed in your comic books? Does it take a lot of time for one frame? Uh, well, <laughs> I've really been struggling with that lately. If, if you asked me that question two years ago, I would have said, I want my comic to have every panel be its own individual piece of art. Right. Right. And there are a lot of movies that you could say, uh, you know, uh, Christopher Nolan is kind of like that. Well, uh, and uh, Aaron, 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 Aaron Darren, uh, Darren Aronofsky. Yeah. 48 Hours jumps into my mind. If you think, cinema, if cinematography, you know cinematography hours. and like... Exactly. There are some there are some movies that if you just like push pause at any moment, they're just like an automatic, you know, 
paintings. Um, so let me finish. Okay. So, yes. so a couple years ago, I would have said that every panel should be a, uh, its own individual piece of artwork. Once a year, I read Scott McCloud's Understanding Comics, which is like the the most accessible book on the subject, right? Will Eisner did uh, a lot of books on, you know, understanding comics, and, but they were very, you know, they weren't as accessible. I don't know if you guys have read this book, Understanding Comics, but it's, it's a no, comic. No, I'm going to get it. It's a comic about comics in the form of a comic. Oh, wait. I have it's seen It's very that. old. I've seen, seen it. Yes, then. I've seen it. Anyway. What the fuck is this? It's my Tide oh, pen. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can, you can write it on your denim. <laughs> It'll clean. <laughs> that was on, so, that okay. was on camera. <laughs> so, the, my, my, my point is, is that... Comics is a very interesting uh, way to give somebody else information. Because... Just like all story, you, just like all story, you need tempo and you need pacing, and you need you need people to be able to understand what they're looking at, but you don't want them to get bogged down by the details. Mm -hmm. So, by making really detailed panels, you slow down that information, and sometimes that's what you want. Right. There's this thing called the splash page, which is the right. It's a it's a huge. Mm -hmm. It's the full panel. It's super detailed. You use those panels, you use splash pages for when something like really big happens, mm -hmm. you know, or at least something really important. So when I first started, I'm coming from, I'm coming from a place where I do stuff like this, right? This so these are, uh, they're, wow, they're just single, wow, look at these okay. drawings. <laughs> these are, are just single panels, right? These are not panels of the comic. This is what... This is what I had been doing before I started doing comics. So it's like, so well, there's, there's no story involved in any of these, right? Besides what what's there. Dude, look at all of them. So when I started doing comics, oh, this guy is amazing. I said Seriously. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. make my panels like this. But what it ha what happens is it bogs down the the comic. It's too much detail. Right. So recently I've been trying to I mean, dumb, dumb down, I so know. to speak, what I'm doing. I want to give everybody a, a, a look at some of these. Pause it if you see something you really like. I mean, all of this stuff's for sale, right? Yeah, these are prints. Um, you can get these through my Facebook page. Facebook page? Christopher Knox. Christopher, Christopher Knox. Um, and then I hang... I have work... That is really right intense. Yeah? At... That pizza place? What are we? Pinkies. Pinkies, right. There's a couple of pizzas. Hi, Sona. Pinkies pizza. Hey. You got my pizza like put again? Yeah. <laughs> probably been digging through the garbage. There's nothing more humble than somebody greeting you by pissing on your foot. Hi, I love you. She got so excited that she peed by the door, and then she peed by another bench, and then she just decided to urinate in the dining room. She really liked him. So did I. <laughs> One in Rome. Do you like the Romans? So um, those are his single panels. That's what he was doing before he got to the comics. So here's a comic. Oh my goodness. You made um, this yourself? Yeah. It's oh. a little uh, saddle stitched kind of homebrew thing. This is gold. I, this is gold. I didn't want to... Handmade. I didn't want to uh, pay the cost for... Uh, for a cover. Lay down. Lay down. So I just um, I hand draw each cover. So every cover, I don't I only brought one with me. I ended up I brought three with me originally, but over the course of the past two days I've given two of them away. Wow. Um so uh this so the inside's printed, but mm -hmm. the outside cover is just like a quick illustration that I did. Wow. These are the illustrations on the inside of the book. These are all printed. I mean, he does a, an original cover on the outside, and then these are all, but they're handmade. I mean, it looks like you've stapled them and everything. Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. I just so, take a piece of craft paper. And... Uh, you can, you <laughs> That's can, so cool. I am, I, I'm impressed. You can get these at 
almost any comic book shop in Portland. Really? Yeah. I've got them on every shelf. Fucking A. These...